Hello, uh, this is Clean Tech TV, and my name is Giles Parkinson. Joining us today is Joe Hume, an energy and environmental analyst with uh, private equity fund CVC. Joe, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Tell us, Joe, tell us about CVC and your interest in the uh, clean tech and energy sector. Yeah, CVC has been involved in the sort of the clean technology sector well, very actively since 2002 when we won a licence for effectively a joint venture with the government to establish the Renewable Energy Equity Fund. That was a co-funded fund, uh, which was for early stage investment to try and get new and emerging and promising renewable energy technologies off the ground. We then launched a later fund, the CVC Sustainable Investment Fund, uh, which is the, the more active fund now. What do you have in your portfolio and, and which part of the sector do you find um, particularly interesting? Is it, um, is it in uh, renewable energy or clean um, or, or other clean, uh, clean tech options? The Renewable Energy Equity Fund, REEF, CBC Reef is it was a closed fund, so it's in the we're figuring out it was meant to end in 2010. So we're working with the government to to figure out what's going to happen to that fund. So the more active fund is now the Sustainable Investment Fund. Um, within that portfolio, it is um, it's it's it covers all aspects of environmental sustainability. So uh, we do have a lot of air, water, and land purification technologies and companies within there. Waste management and clean energy, Um, sort of the most active sector now, uh, the sector that we're most actively involved in and assessing is in clean energy because there's such a global trend and demand for clean energy technology. So that's certainly where we are focused. Um, But we also are constantly looking for other other environmental options around air, water, land, uh, and water is another big emerging area. Now, um one of your um, one of your portfolio companies is Biopower Systems, the uh, the Wave and Tidal Energy Company, and um, they've been in development phase, and now I guess they're approaching commercialisation phase. What's the challenge of getting a company across um, the so-called valley of death into actually producing things? It is so capital intensive, and so you just need a lot of capital to get to build power stations, to get demo demo programs up. And this is particularly compared to perhaps um, IT, venture capital, you know, venture capital investment in IT where you need to engage a few programmers, quite a few programmers, but um, and some, you know, good computers and so forth, compared to commercialising clean energy technologies. You have to build power stations, you have to connect them to the grid, you have to run them for a year before any bank is even going to look at them. Um, and so it's highly capital intensive, which is a, is a key challenge, and it takes a lot of time. Um, and this means that you need venture capitalists with very deep pockets, or you need to partner up with a big global corporate like a GE or a Siemens or somebody that's just going to either partner with you or buy you out at some stage of the technology developments. Yeah, so the, so the challenge is enormous, but it's not insurmountable. But it's huge, and it's particularly hard here in Australia because um, there is not a lot of uh, public funding support for that uh, good R and D. But post R and D in the commercialisation demo, demonstration commercialisation phase, uh, not a lot of public money going into that. What sort of policy changes would you like to see to sort of help bridge that um, that gap between uh, research R and D uh, and and commercialisation? I fully agree with um, Susan Jeans. I don't know if you've seen her work from um, the Geothermal Power Association. Um, in that, uh, the private sector is just not able to wear the risk associated with commercialisation at the moment without help, and so it does need public funding going into demonstration and proof of concept. Um, projects such uh, as loan guarantees and equity guarantees. Loan guarantees would help, yeah, yeah, uh, and uh, just straight equity injections or some sort of mechanism that provides a higher feed and tariff. Yeah, or, or not necessarily a feed and tariff, but a higher power price that is will get um, these new technologies over the commercialisation hump. You know, ultimately they are anticipated to be cheaper <laughs> than um, a lot of the current technologies that we have, and particularly renewable energy technologies. But, they, you know, it's expensive to develop them, and then when you get economies of scale, you get yourself over the commercialisation hump, the, the price is, is fully anticipated to come down. Um, but it needs that initial funding 
assistance. And and as um, one of our investees, Biopower Systems, Tim, the CEO, there says, you know, they're, they're largely agnostic into what, which form the support comes, whether it's in a higher power price to get the projects over the line or um, it is in the form of a, a loan guarantee or uh, just a straight equity injection, um, so long as it, it leads to the same outcome. What about the size of the market? I mean, I guess a lot of the clean tech or the sort of the, um, the private equity, the venture capital has been focused in the US, and now I guess a lot of it's in China. I mean, is it realistic to expect that we can have such an industry in Australia? I mean, do we have enough capital to actually make it work? And, and how important is that we do have a clean tech industry that develops here? The VC industry is so thin. Here, you know, for early stage, and and it's retreated since the financial crisis. Is, there's no doubt about that, and and there is some anecdotal evidence of it retreating even further as uh, superannuation funds and so forth here in Australia, uh, because they're so big, they're looking globally at private equity and venture capital funds and and assessing whether they can those funds. Are, uh, international funds will perform better than local ones. And so, you know, some of the private equity allocations local from local investors are actually going overseas. And so, yeah, to the second part of your question, how essential is it that we have a venture capital uh, industry here? Yeah, I mean, it would be tragic for a lot of our fabulous kind of innovations and and technologies to go overseas at a very early stage because then they'll have no sort of Australian homegrown element. And 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 from my point of view, it's it's just um, you know we we do want to be a smart country. We don't want to be just a bunch of people digging stuff out of the ground. And so it's it's more from that point of view of keeping smart people and innovation here. So look, um, thank you very much for joining us today on Clean Tech TV, and I um, hope to talk to you soon. Okay, great. Thanks, Giles. Bye.